Somewhere there's an ocean that I desperately need to see. To stand on its foamy shores and contemplate the vastness of existence. To yell my name into the oblivion and feel the kiss of salty mist on my face. Somewhere, beyond deserts of concrete and steel, out past morality and right and wrong, I see your footprints in the sand and anticipate our union. Everybody, all right. Good. Congratulations. Good morning. Thank you. Nice Thank to meet y'all. So happy for you, the whole family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does it mean to be held, not by walls, not by chains and iron bars, but by love? This place is hauntingly familiar to me. It's where I started my journey of freedom months before. As my friend Bonnaroo begins his own journey, I can't help but think of all those who are still behind the walls of San Quentin. Valentine's Day card from you. Very cute. You always gave me Valentine's Day cards. Your presence in my life makes me a better, more whole person. That's right. You see? We can't always control the circumstances that the universe places us in or the times and spaces where we find love. Mm. That's so beautiful. <laughs> Why don't you write me no more, huh? <laughs> no, I got your little text messages. That's crazy. Mm. I have all these letters. Like, right here, I haven't gone through any of them, nothing on I used to go through them more. Yeah. And I used to, like, hide different ones where you were really nice to me and really sweet, and I would put them in different sections of the house, and I would stumble upon it, and I would read it. This one is from 2010. You said, sup, stinky. <laughs> 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 it was nice talking to you on the phone on Sunday, even if it was only for a minute. Then the next day, I got your letter. Thanks. I'm also trying to transfer to a prison in Northern California so I can be closer. I'll keep you posted. I'm sending lots of hugs. Where were you in 2010? Solida? Oh, you were in Lancaster. Yeah. Lancaster. yeah. I keep telling myself that when things are uncomfortable, that's when growth happens. And I'm trying to learn from all of this, but I can't help feeling like I made a mistake leaving the last place. This is when you first came to um, San Quentin? Yeah. yeah. The first Christmas after San Quentin? Because you came in October, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a hard time. I was feeling like really alone. And mm -hmm. Just trying to transition into like a new community. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I'm also realizing that being patient and waiting for the justice system to correct itself may not be the answer. Even with a dynamite lawyer, the system is not known for admitting its mistakes and correcting them. My point is there has to be another other ways to engage this. And if that includes talking to people about what's going on, I'm all for it. Anyways, thank you so much for being involved and taking initiative. It does mean a lot to me. It really does remind me of like how much you influence like my political upbringing and stuff and just like writing letters back and forth to you and talking to you about stuff. And it wasn't just like prison stuff. It was like a lot of things. Such a beautiful picture when we were pretending to be sleeping because <laughs> we were running out of ideas of poses. No, that's a good idea. What are you talking about? It was a good idea. To me, in my mind, like the way I thought about it is like I wanted to imagine us just sleeping through like all of this that mm. was happening. Mm. Yeah. I love that. February 2020. Dear Issa, I hope you're well today and finding ease wherever you are. I know your birthday's coming up and I'm excited for you, even though I won't be there in person. February is a special month because it's the month that we both came into this world in our purest form of the divine before the distortions of the world became imprinted on us. I miss you so much today. But to be honest, I can't count the days that I've had this feeling. It's part of the experience of this place, not only the architecture designed to separate us physically from each other with cold concrete and steel but also the psychological and emotional distance that cuts through the core of what feels like one of our most human needs, to be deeply connected to others, and ultimately in that, connected to a purpose. We're all inside of this place trying to find our way out of here but also trying to find a way to be together in spite of the separations that are inherent in the prison structure. What's helped me stay connected is my work here inside of the media center with the First Watch team creating videos about the lives and perspectives of incarcerated people. It feels like some of the most important work that I've ever been a part of, and alongside some of the most talented people that I've ever been around. Welcome to the First Watch Creative Space. It's an election year, and we thought that we would get some of the voices of the people that reside here at San Quentin. We have a voice, and one way our voice is heard is by do doing this type of work. Apart from my crew, Edmund, Tan, Reese, and Jesse, Rasan, who is the host of Ear Hustle, is someone I love collaborating with. And I have a question for the billionaire Democratic hopefuls. Why are you guys spending $500 million on commercials? That He's a visionary thinker and sees the bigger picture of our work here in ways that feel very aligned with my own values. Because no matter what, my voice remains free and I'ma keep screaming about better solutions that don't involve violence or incarceration until all our problems are solved and our streets are safer. My name is Lonnie Morris, and safety is to me. Lonnie, who has been here at San Quentin for over 40 years and has been doing media work for much of that time, is a mentor for all of us and someone who I respect greatly for his wisdom. Wisdom gained through lived experience, not through theory or formal education. We talk on the phone and all that. One of the things that really is difficult for me and my family is 
they really believe, you know, I'm getting out of prison. It's going to be real difficult for me to get out of prison. So I'm stuck in this kind of no man land of trying to be honest and truthful with them, but not create any illusions. More than anything else, what feels important is how we are building community, creating shared values and meaning through this work, and living out our commitments to our greater community of incarcerated people all across the state by using the power of telling our stories to change the system that incarcerated us. I remember for so many years in this prison feeling like a ship lost at sea, alone and far away from community and the healing power of connectedness. And finally, I found through filmmaking a way to access the thing that I needed most to heal the parts of myself that felt broken. For the first time in almost 12 years in prison, I feel connected to a purpose, Issa. But first, Watch them. <laughs> March 17th, 2020. Dear Issa, what is going on in the world? Out in the world, you all have been given a shelter in place order. Last night, about 100 of us were moved to the dorms and the institution was put on full lockdown. I wonder how you're doing and if you're safe, if my mom is safe, and whether or not by the time you get this letter, this will all be over. California is now under a statewide stay-at-home order. The decision comes as California plans for a worst-case scenario. Alabama and Missouri just joined 40 other states that are urging people to stay home. America is now preparing for the pandemic. We were really scared because we knew that it was inevitable. We, I think we all kind of had talked about how if COVID-19 gets to San Quentin, it's going to be a huge outbreak. Outside non-incarcerated populations, started going into like the beginnings of a shelter in place. That same week, the prison system went on modified program. Even though there hadn't been any confirmed cases within the prison, yet in anticipation, the prison went on lockdown. And people went from having full access to everything the prison offered every day to nothing. COVID-19 is rapidly spreading through the state's overcrowded prisons. Conditions make it nearly impossible to stop the virus once it enters a prison. Hey, Adamu. We're so glad that you can join us. What's up, everybody? You've got like 12 of us listening to you. What's going on in there? It's kind of like a chaotic situation. Last Monday, this is what we heard. There were some incarcerated people that were brought up from Chino where they had a COVID-19 outbreak. Um, now, all of a sudden, like we have an outbreak here. The last word that we got was there were 20 cases keep bringing us the information of what you want us to be demanding on your all's behalf. We don't want to be making up demands for you. We want to hear what you need um, and support you and know that we're thinking and we're trying to get organized. We were getting real-time information because of relationships that were pre-existing. And anytime we could um, connect people to people inside so that people were able to speak for themselves. On the line with me, I have a friend of mine, Adama, who's um, currently living in San Quentin, and he wanted to share some things about the conditions inside and his concerns about the way the the epidemic is being handled at San Quentin. Okay. I mean, I think everybody has a very high level of anxiety right now. I would just say, please speak up and speak out about what's going on. They're packed by cage animals. I'm not sure about the status of a person that's sleeping you know, feet away from me. So many people in San Quentin are dying because we can't physically distance ourselves from each other. Because it's so dark, it's so dank, there was no electricity. The number of inmates at San Quentin who are now positive for COVID-19 exploded over the weekend. 1,011 inmates tested positive at San Quentin State Prison. 2,200 prisoners have been infected with the virus. 25 have died. San Quentin has now become the largest coronavirus outbreak in California. Peace, Sue. I used to love watching dominoes fall. As they hit the next in the line and the next in the line, they created a sense of excitement and wonder as I eyed how far they would go. 
Now, however, I'm seeing COVID-19 knock all of us down in the line, just like dominoes. So they don't seem so cool anymore. It's Independence Day, and another black man has died in prison. He made the third at San Quentin on death row to die from COVID-19. I have a headache and a sneeze, been sick for five days straight. Feels like something's trying to push my right eye out of socket. Things are crazy here, but don't you be crying. I will survive. Salute. Keep on fighting as I will. One love, Rasan. Hey, Jed. I just thought I'd take a moment to write you a few words. Just tell you what's going on with me. I didn't uh, think uh, I'd ever be faced with a situation where my life was on the line and I hadn't even did nothing to get my life in jeopardy. In my life, I've done a lot of things that cause people to want to hurt me. But here I am sitting in prison, haven't done anything to anybody, and this disease wants to hurt me. It's strange. And I'm sitting there just waiting for them to call the second tier for showers and phone calls so I can get on the phone and hear your voice. Bright my day. Take care. God bless. I love you. I was so excited to receive your letter today. As the envelope came through the bars of my cell and hit the floor, I felt my heart race, anticipating where your words would take me, hoping to meet you in that place above these walls, beyond the mountains, where the ocean begins. It made me reflect on the supremacy of love and that that is the only form of supremacy that we will tolerate. It seems at times that words are all we have, as the world has so cruelly separated us in so many ways, and in the absence of fingertips, glances, and hugs. And so, as you say, we reach across the boundaries of time, space, and ideology to touch, if only just for a moment. Your words are a meditation, and as I sit here reading them again, I feel a bit less scattered. Let's turn to James King from the Ella Baker Center. Thanks to the chair and members of the committee for allowing me to speak with you today. My name is James King. I was released from San Quentin six months ago after living there for six and a half years. The only safe, responsible solution is large scale releases. But in spite of reports to the contrary, releases have actually slowed down. What we need right now and what we need always is mass releases, no more excuses, yes. no more transfers that kill more people, yes. no more people getting sick on our watch. Oh, free my baby, break your home. I can take care of him. I can take care of him. I birthed him. God blessed me with him. He blessed me with him. Dear Damo. What's given me comfort lately is knowing that so many people inside and outside have been organizing and coming together to care for each other in this moment. I just want you to know how grateful I am for you. I know how much you're putting at risk to speak out right now. I'm learning so much from you, Big Head. Each time you tell us what's happening inside and what new demands you've gathered from your community. Organizing like this makes me feel so close to you, almost like you're here, even though we haven't seen each other in months. Every morning, me and your mom look at the COVID tracker and see the cases skyrocketing at San Quentin and all over. We're so anxious all the time, wondering if the next email we get will tell us there are now cases in your housing unit. I just hope all we're doing can somehow bring you and everyone home soon. There's so many people out here fighting with y'all. I love you, big head. Please do everything you can to be safe. Issa. I never believed in God my whole life, but around the end of the summer of 2020, I started feeling something, a movement and energy that was pushing me towards freedom. And suddenly, like divine intervention, I was set free. But here's another thing. 
Dear Issa, how can I explain the complexity of that moment? The pure joy of getting your life back, immediately followed by an overwhelming sadness and anxiety of leaving all of your best friends in a community that supported you through the winter of your life. I can't help but think of Rasan, Edmund, Lonnie, and so many more who were so much a part of my freedom journey, but won't be there with me at the end and who continue to walk their own path. I was just being there and I just like, I can't believe that you're home. I can't believe that this is forever, you know? And that it doesn't end. Like we don't have to have somebody saying like, oh, the visit's over, it's time to go home now. It's time to leave him now, you know? We went to the ocean that day and I remember that's something that we had talked about for like such a long time. We went to like your favorite beach and ocean beach and it was just like a moment I feel like I had dreamed of since I was like a little kid <laughs> or in that, in that courtroom, like, you know, and thinking that it would happen and feeling like it would never happen. And then it happened. I've always had a strong connection to the ocean. For as long as I can remember, it was a place that I went to to calm myself and cleanse my energy. Years ago, when I was moved to San Quentin, the water, which was so close I could smell it and at times see it through barbed wire or bars, represented my proximity to freedom and peace. I remember the day that I got out and standing on that beach next to the prison. Here I was on some of the most beautiful and expensive land in the world, on a beach where people in this neighborhood come to play with their children and dogs in the shadow of this terrible place. And how just an hour before I and the people inside had no concept of this beach and what was happening here. There's like this joke inside of San Quentin about Marin specifically and about how dogs in Marin have more rights than incarcerated people. It's a joke, but it's also, there's a lot of it that rings true.
What's up, Sana? Uh, hi. Nikki, wanna say hi to M? What's hi. up? Oh. Happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday. you. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Don't forget you have a dog. Yeah, oh, hello, dog. dog. Is this a let me interview. Let me guy. interview Sana. Hey, Sana, you ready? Oh, don't lick the camera, please. I just oh, jumped wow. over something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, I wish you were here too. We wish you were here too. I, oh, I got him a transformer balloon. I got him a transformer balloon. <laughs> What? Okay. <laughs> what? Okay. Hey, I love you, uh, Edmund. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it. Hit it. Yeah. Whoa. For years, I had celebrated my birthday in prison. Each passing year, also a hard reminder of how much time had passed in that place and how many more I had left. But on this day, my joy wouldn't feel contained by concrete walls or iron bars. We got it. We got the sound. So one time when I was like six years old, I came outside with my basketball, with my headband on, with my brand new pro kids, and I went by the basketball court. And I'm and the brothers out there, man. They said, let me borrow the ball. I said, all right, here go. I shot him the ball. And they said, man, check it out, youngster, you got next. And I said, all right. And I've been waiting 40 years now to play ball with the guys. <laughs> <laughs> I still yeah, got that. Well, let's get right into it, man. So tell me, what's your vision uh, for community as an ideal of resistance to a system that says that people who have committed crimes need to be yeah. separated and confined? Yeah, that's a great question. Relationships are an act of resiliency and a pushback against the isolation. Isolation is actually a root cause of crime. Because if I feel isolated, if I feel like I'm not part of the community, then I don't respect or value the community's rules or social norms. But when I feel like I'm part of the community, then I have a responsibility to my community, right? It's central to our, our humanity, you know what I mean? It, without, without feeling loved, it's hard to love. And if you don't feel love and you, and you don't love, then you don't care. If you don't care, you're a dangerous person. This is true, this is true. It's one of the most powerful acts of resistance because it says to the, to the system that we're not gonna allow you to do that. We're not gonna allow you to take this person's humanity and we're going to main, help them maintain their value by showing them love and concern. So right. that's all I want to say. Thank you for this. Thank you. It's going to be home in a little bit. That's right. How you feeling about that? I'm feeling good about that, man. I think that, you know, it's, it's coming and it's agonizing. You know, the weight is a little agonizing. I ain't going to pretend, but I'm so thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm on Ramadan. That's calmed my spirit down, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't have the energy to be all, uh, uh, you know. So, <laughs> so, What's the third thing you're going to do when you get out? I don't know, bro. The third I, thing, bro. I, I need know. to know. You went for the weirdest question. Everybody want to know the first thing. Yeah, the third thing you're going to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's what's up. Thank you, uh, OG. <laughs> Lonnie had always, for so many of us inside, represented the resilience of the human spirit. In him, we could see how someone could transform all of that, 45 years of it, into a meaningful and purposeful existence. That in spite of our wretchedness, we were still living, even behind these walls. Yeah, I'll see you soon, brother. Yeah, right. I love you. Yeah, I love you too.
take care of yourself. That's right. And I'll talk to, you to see him coming home meant that all things were possible. Corey, happy birthday. Thank you. Did you fly out here? I did. I just knew it was going to happen at some uh -huh. point, and uh -huh. I just wanted to be here. This is a marvelous day. It yeah. really is. Yeah. It really is. You told me, boy, you said, look, man, we're going to get you out of there, man. We, we got we're going to keep working, and we ain't going to cut loose till we get you. You got you out. No, we got we out. There, yeah, everybody is. Yeah, we got me out. Everybody is. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, man. So many people. What's up, y'all got that move? Get it, man. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, boy. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know, can't gotta be like y'all. You know, you gotta come out. Yeah, can't gotta come out. Don't go where to say. 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 Don't go Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only to bless this day, but to bless the rest of our lives. Uh, for me, this journey has been one where there's been a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns. A lot of people have come in my life, left my life, back in my life. It has allowed me to recognize that you got to value who you are and in the moment that you have in life and the people that's in your life in that moment. A lot of times we get caught up in all this worldly stuff, and I'm asking God to let us step back from some of that stuff, you know, and recognize that there's a bigger purpose in life than just living and doing and ripping and running and, and not valuing the people that we uh, say we love and we care about. So I ask God to bring us closer together in spirit and mind and heart and soul, to guide us in our affairs, and to let us always turn our attention to the creator and not to man. May God bless and protect us. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's get away from Sam. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Hello? Yeah, what up? Can you hear me? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I don't know, bro. It, it's so tricky. Let's go to the situation. Okay. They've been bringing in about 80 people a week for the last uh -huh. six weeks. Like, just keep uh -huh. bringing people in, bringing people in. The same thing happened. Uh, uh, on one of them buses, man, somebody came in sick. What? So it, it, it's, just, it's just crazy. It's like they're not learning. And I don't know if they're trying to kill us. And the county jail is so overcrowded. They ain't got no choice but accept all these people. What? But they just don't learn. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that. That's terrible. Doing all right. They be speeding up down this spot, bro. Can't have to watch themselves. Look, man, 
So tell me about how everything's been going. Oh man, it's it's been a whirlwind, man. I mean, you know, <laughs> but life is still life, and so you still got to do your laundry. You still got to. Uh, yesterday I had to vacuum my floor and <laughs> scrub it. You know, all that, all that stuff. You know. I know you haven't had like spent a lot of time in Oakland, but for me, like just you know, I, I was gone for over a decade, and it's a lot of stuff that's still familiar. It's a lot of stuff that's like drastically changed, right? Right. I'm assuming a lot look different. But I went to the Fillmore, uh -huh. but it ain't the Fillmore I knew. You know what I'm saying? That was like almost like 100% black, and now it's very few black folks over there. You know, so those kind of things have changed. You know, I guess uh, gentrification has played a major part in that. It's getting cleaner and. Safer, right? And and then also me thinking about like how we were living in the Bay Area because we were in San Quentin, right? And how that space is so predominantly black, right? Right. How that illustrates just everything, right? How these spaces become like sanitized and clean, but how that process happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And those are things I think we have to really just continue to work on changing, you know. One year ago, CDCR moved 121 incarcerated people here to San Quentin. So today, one year later, we've returned to pray for those who have died. If you would like to step forward and share a story that we could collectively hold with you. Hi, everyone. My partner is currently right here behind us. His name is Tan Tran, and this is my daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tan, if you see this, we love you, and you are not forgotten. Want to say anything to Uniform? We miss you a lot. Thank you. You know, as a formerly incarcerated inmate, you know, uh, just seeing the families, friends, and supporters out here, man, it's, it's a blessing. Thank you for standing in solidarity, and we thank you for everybody coming here today. And we do this chant, this prayer, and we, we offer it up, you know, for our comfort, for our brother's comfort, you know. Oh, my love, Dear Rasan, I was struck today by the thought that just like it's impossible to isolate a virus behind walls, you can't fully separate people from the communities that they belong to. I can't help but think of you and all of my dear loved ones that I want to be free and out of harm's way. I think about all that our community has lost through this time and over all these years living in the belly of this beast and remain in hope that what we seek can be regained and made anew through struggle and community. It's what guides me towards staying connected and in this fight through all of the organizing meetings and direct action like the hyphen that bridges all that is human and heaven itself. All the fighting for folks to be released, all of the difficult complexities of showing up for a community. The drivers of this virus have been social inequality, right? What I witnessed was that the vast overcrowding in San Quentin and at all the prisons. As much as I would like to leave this place and this history behind me, I cannot deny it as part of myself and I will continue to use the tools that I have at my disposal, my voice, my camera, and my newfound privilege as a free person to make sure that all that has been is undone and that we find the way back home together. What up, though? What's going on, bruh? How you doing? Square, man. Yeah? How's your spirit? Oh, man. It's up and it's down. Yeah. It's up and it's down. I just always remind myself that, you know, everything happens in its own time. Right. I don't want to be here, but God had a purpose for me. So let me look for that purpose and not complain. Yeah. People go home, right? Everybody that went home, get it to get me.
and reconnecting me to people that I wouldn't have access to if it wasn't for them. And everybody out there that got up before me is trying to get somebody else out. And so I feel like that's my job. It's my job to go out and advocate to get them out too. So it's like each one of us that got out needs somebody else to get out. And so it's kind of a beautiful thing. Sometimes I feel like I'm unplugged and settled in the matrix. Watch a lack of understanding to create fear and develop hatred. We all at different stages, different mental spaces. One thing that makes us the same is we all human. Embrace it. I was laced up by some sages. One told me the goal is to lead us forward the way we came in and be just like a baby. Cause all the baby know is love until it start to hate. And it don't matter about your class, your gender, or your race. The energy you emit. Could be the difference between you getting lemons or lemonade Either way when you get a taste of the ways of the universe Mistakes get brought to light to rectify and recognize All the ways that you can learn Sometimes the process hurts, but we gotta process pain Cause hurt people hurt people, time to grow from change We need to heal from trauma, we need really problems All our problems, but fulfill them restorations If we ain't on different pages Gotta be like a breath of fresh air, like respiration No lie, yeah Please feel me, oh, cause I just wanna change the world forever. No lie, I wanna bring the world together, yeah. But everybody wants.